Hello everyone, welcome back to Behind the Pages with Maggie, breaking down barriers one story at a time. Today, I welcome you to episode 47, where we'll be reading the stories of some of the most fantastically great women who made history. Now, this collection of autobiographical stories, written by Kate Penhurst, contains vibrant and beautiful illustrations and wonderfully engaging texts, and it is truly a celebration of just some of the most inspirational women who put their mark on the world we live in. For instance, today, we are going to travel through the Underground Railroad with the brave Harriet Tubman, as well as the fearless queen of the Celtic Iceni tribe, Boudicca. Furthermore, we're going to learn the story of the courageous Flora Drummond, who became a leading figure in the suffragette movement. So, without further ado, let us begin the story of the fantastically great women who made history. Wanted, runaway slave and underground railroad conductor Harriet Tubman. Born Araminta Ross around 1820 in the slave state of Maryland, USA, changed her identity to Harriet Tubman when she escaped, has shamelessly made repeated trips to Maryland between 1850 and 1860 to help many more slaves run away, report sightings to your nearest slave catcher. But as we can see, Harriet Tubman says, you'll never catch me. Now, like many other African Americans in the south of the USA in the 1800s, Harriet Tubman and her family were slaves. This meant they were the property of a white, rich household. To make money for themselves, owners forced slaves to work long hours on land and in their homes with no payment. Harriet dreamed of a better life. After hearing stories of slaves escaping north to free states where slavery was outlawed, Harriet tried to persuade her family to run away with her, but they were too scared. Too scared of being caught and punished. Even though Harriet was scared too, in 1849, she decided that freedom was worth the risk. Starting from Maryland, Let's follow the tracks to freedom. Runaway slaves like Harriet were helped to freedom by the Underground Railroad. Although this sounds like a railway, it was actually a network of safe routes north. Underground meant that it was top secret. It was set up by people, white and black, who wanted to put an end to slavery. They were called abolitionists. Traveling at night meant less chance of being caught. Harriet had to be careful to stay hidden from slave catchers. Now, as you can see, as Harriet says, if I follow the North Star, I'll know where I'm heading to in the right direction. And of course, to the left bottom side, you see the slave catcher holding a wanted poster, chasing after runaway slaves. Directions were given by conductors, and hiding places known as stops were offered in safe houses run by station masters. As you can see, the woman who has the shelter called, Shh, you can hide here. When Harriet reached the free state of Pennsylvania, she was, for the first time in her life, a free woman. But without her friends and family, Harriet felt very lonely. She decided to use her freedom to help other slaves to freedom and became an Underground Railroad conductor. And as we can see here, Harriet feels that she was a stranger in a strange land. In 1850, The Fugitive Slave Act was introduced in order to make it harder for slaves to find freedom in the USA, even in free states. But this didn't stop Harriet. She guided her passengers further, into Canada, to find safety. Reward 
By 1860, a reward was being offered for Harriet's capture. Because of this, Harriet had to give up being an underground railroad conductor, but she found new ways to fight for freedom. During the American Civil War, Harriet served as a nurse and a spy, even leading a military expedition. Harriet's brave deeds helped to ensure that one day all slaves would be free. And at the end of the war, in 1863, slavery was abolished. Now, let us read the story of Boudicca. Boudicca was queen of the Celtic Iceni tribe during the Roman invasion of Britain in 43 AD. The Celts believed that women could be strong leaders, and with her fearless attitude, wild hair, and brutal battle skills, Boudicca was a brave and powerful leader who inspired terror in all who met her. The Roman army made a mighty mistake when, simply because she was a woman, they underestimated Boudicca. Now, let's follow the spears to track Boudicca's battle against Rome. Lands of the Iceni tribe In 59 AD, Boudicca's husband died and she was left to rule alone. The Romans thought the ideal of a female ruler was ridiculous and so told Boudicca they were in charge. Boudicca resisted and as a result, she and her daughters were treated very cruelly. The Romans thought they had scared Boudicca off, but they couldn't have been more wrong. Enraged by the injustice of what had happened to her and her people, Boudicca gathered a fearsome army of Iceni and Trinovante soldiers, a neighboring tribe. First, Boudicca ordered them to attack the Roman town of Cumulodunum. They showed no mercy, destroying a temple built in honor of the Roman emperor and setting buildings alight. As Boudicca says on her carriage, the Romans will be sorry they messed with the Celts. Next, they wreaked havoc on Londinium, the Roman town that later became London. Then, Boudicca marched on the Roman town of Verulamium, causing more chaos. Boudicca's ferocious army took the Romans by surprise. Her uprising was threatening their hold on Britain. And when the rebels and the Roman army finally came face to face, Boudicca inspired her army to fight bravely. But this time, they were defeated. No one knows for sure what happened to Boudicca. Some think that, rather than be captured by the Romans, Boudicca poisoned herself. Other accounts say that she didn't survive the battle. But one thing is certain. Mighty Boudicca wasn't afraid to defend her people and their way of life. That is why 2,000 years later, her legend lives on. In our next story, we'll be learning about the courageous Flora Drummond who became a leading figure in the suffragette movement. Let us march proudly with the courageous suffragette Flora Drummond. Flora Drummond was born in Manchester, England in 1878 and grew up in Scotland. Flora wanted to become a postmistress, but because of a rule which said that all postmasters and mistresses must be at least five foot two inches tall, she was told she was too short to do the job. Flora was outraged. The rule didn't take into account that women are often shorter than men. Her height had nothing to do with how good she would have been at the job. Standing tall, Flora decided to fight for fairer rights for working women, and in 1906, she joined the WSPU, the Women's Social and Political Union. Women in the WSPU were called suffragettes. They fought for the law to be changed so that women had the right to vote and have a say in how the country was run. Quickly, Flora became a leading figure in the WSPU. She was known as the General 
because she was so skilled at organizing and inspiring her fellow suffragettes to do all they could to get votes for women. The government tried its best to ignore the suffragettes' campaign, but Flora made that very difficult for them to do indeed. As we can see Flora speaking here, she says that she wore military-style clothing to lead her army of suffragettes. On the 9th of March, 1906, suffragette in 10 Downing Street. Security was breached at the home of Britain's Prime Minister by prominent suffragette Flora Drummond. While a fellow suffragette distracted police, Flora rushed inside before being promptly ejected. Her brazen intention was to hand out information about the Votes for Women campaign to the Prime Minister himself. But on the 5th of October 1907, suffragette marched on Scotland. A crowd of 10,000 cheering onlookers lined the streets to witness the spectacle of Scotland's first march in the name of women's rights. The procession was made up of around a thousand suffragettes and was expertly organised and led by Scottish suffragette Flora Drummond. And the following year, on the 21st of June, the general set sail for Parliament. There were shocking scenes on the River Thames today as Flora Drummond found another inventive method to force cabinet ministers to listen to the suffragette message. Unsuspecting ministers who were enjoying tea on the riverside terrace of the House of Parliament were unable to ignore Mrs Drummond's shouts as she sailed past on a barge, inviting them to join a suffragette march in London's Hyde Park. Flora's heroic attitude, enthusiasm and efficient organising skills played a huge part in leading women towards the equality they deserved and in 1918 the right to vote was given to some women over the age of 21. Well that is the end of this episode for Behind the Pages with Maggie, breaking down barriers one story at a time. We'll continue on with the stories of this collection of books written by Kate Pankhurst of some of the most fantastically great women who made history in our episode next week. I hope you enjoyed and are inspired by the stories of the three women we read today in this week's episode. Thank you very much, everyone. Goodbye for now.